welcome back to another night of chess and psychology today we are wrapping up sicilian oh good god this is roser which i wanted to call razor i don't know if i actually got that in there but, but we are going to shave off sicilian <laughs> with razor roser We've done Dragon, Maroxi, a bunch of Nidorf, a bunch of Shiveningen, some Sveshnikov, Kalashnikov, some sidelines that no one ever thought of, a bunch of Pulse and Con, everything, everything. So, don't you come here asking me about other Sicilians. <laughs> if, I mean, if you have a nice game that you want me to analyze, definitely I will. But tonight is the last one. Also, be probably because Tracy was about to grow a tail by how much he hated me doing Sicilians. So, we are officially wrapping it up. And as a special bonus, uh, I was not able to load this on leeches after about a half hour of fighting with leeches, personally. And so we are doing chess plays today, going old school. So, <laughs> I am ready to jump in kind of checking to see if there's anything from the chat, any questions, any feelings. Yeah, unfortunately, Leeches didn't really, couldn't, it just wouldn't let me make it the past six moves, and I, I was upset about that. But we will be using Leeches uh, next hour, so if you have games already, put it on Leeches in about an hour, probably a little less, switch to Twitch, analyze your games. All right. Enough chit chat. Let's go wrap up Sicilian, shave it off. I need some non opening streams. Oh, I cannot do the mouse anymore, huh? Now I miss leeches. Okay, so last week we, or well, last few weeks, we spent a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of times talking about E6 or E5. Actually, E6, I think we did way earlier in Sicilian Fortnite style. And then we talked about like the D6 with E5 and everything. So now we are going for Roser. I've had some very interesting experiences with it. And it's weird because um, I had one of the early on coaches that I had over 10 years ago, rest in peace, Kivanis. Um, he was the one who kind of gave me the short and sweet, here's Roser. This is what you got to look out for. So I'm gonna try to do something like that for you too. There are a lot, a lot, a lot of really, really great classic games. So don't just rely on what I'm telling you, but take your time with the opening, make sure that you feel comfortable with it. I'm gonna give you my exper experience and my expertise on it, but it's up to you to cater to how you want, put your games and yeah. I have a few students who do that whenever I teach them something they go and add to it and they show me and I'm very proud of them. <laughs> Alright, so first things first, let's talk about, let's put, put this the other way, and then let's talk about Queen A5 just because, why not? Uh, Queen A5 is not necessarily the main line, the one thing that, the things you want to watch out for is Bishop d7, e6, this is kind of like, it's, a lot of it just transposes, so you don't necessarily have to just look for one line, a lot of it kind of transposes together. Um, the big idea is, is, let me actually see if I can, no, that's not it, that is it, yeah. So a lot of the things that are going to happen are surrounding this idea, as black, that's what black is most likely going to try and do. And as white, what we might want to do is we have to figure out when to take it. We have to, because then when black takes it, then we have interesting ideas from white, which one of them is the uh, long castle idea, followed by if you can somehow fixate these double pawns. And I know there's too many arrows, this is probably giving you a mini headache, and I apologize for that. But I kind of wanted to give you the overview of this is what white wants, this is what black wants. As white, if we could manage to get those f pawns fixated together, maybe get a bishop with h5 so we're attacking f7, and that is going to be a dream come true. All right, so you probably have a little bit more info now. Let's go. 
Let's talk about E6 first, just because I see that I had a very painful loss on it. Uh, this was very early on when I had just started playing the main line in Sicilian, so I was not very comfortable in it. Um, here, I made the mistake and I went bishop h4. Sorry, I made the mistake and I went bishop e3. Yes, I did. I'll tell you why this is a mistake. I went bishop e3 because I thought that I I need to do f3 g4 and I thought my bishop on e3 makes a lot more sense. However, my opponent was experienced grandmaster. He was um, grandmaster Ryatsky. Yeah, and oh yeah, this was the first international open I played. Uh -huh. Almost 10 years ago. Nostalgic. So, I tried to continue with my plan and I was slightly oblivious. Probably should have taken with the bishop and dealt with that. I took with the queen. I'm just showing you why this is not good. Then we'll go to why what we should do is good. So, e5. See, black is already beginning to do stuff in the queen side. I'm trying to, but it's not as strong because black does not have to castle I'm not forcing them into castling so for example right now my opponent could have considered b4 if I go g5 then here's a bloodbath oh boy and this would have been rather interesting honestly for both sides I kind of like white a little bit more because if the bishop moves then I have rook takes g7 and so it that's kind of why it's better to kind of keep hold of when to push that b pawn for example, in the real game, my opponent just choke, And I started to feel very uncomfortable because, let me tell you, if I take this, then this pawn is already weak, this pawn is already weak. My opponent can start thinking, okay, maybe I can take this. When you take back, now this can be falling, b fours can exist. A lot of uncomfortable stuff are there. For example, if, b, if b4, what do I do? If I move the knight, then bishop takes here, right? It's just very uncomfortable. It's not necessarily losing, but it's not something you want to play as white, especially against a grandmaster. Anyways, I went for g5, he took, and uh, here I should have played queen e5, just because with queen e5, now I can maybe try to poke around the king side a little. It's still not really, you know, it's not nothing big because my queen is still very ups uh, upset. It's beginning hunted, my opponent is attacking, my pawns and the bishops are well. This is just not a position, again, you want to have as white. But this is what the game turned to be. And here I started to um, feel a little more empowered because of, well, I'm not really down on material. Uh, the position is still playable, but black definitely has more stability in the position. And now I'm gonna take a breather, partially because I feel like a sneeze coming up. <laughs> but I need to ask you, uh, as white, what do you think we should do? While well, I figure out what's going on with the sneeze. Ooh. No, <laughs> it's it's just tickling a little. Sorry. <laughs> Poor Ben Simon has had my fair share of sneezes and in microphone so he's I'm ready to mute it <laughs> nah oh. alright aw nobody wants to play this as white I feel like I've lost a bunch of audience and unprotected I fair sorry leeches you were just not letting me upload more than six moves, and it was heartbreaking. Ah, oh, thank you, DM. Yeah, do stuff with the A pawn. That's what I did. I went to A4. Uh, it would have been better to play Rookish one first. Kind of weird, right? Wait. Am I tripping? Why can't they take this? Seriously, I feel like I'm tripping. This is just. There is nothing here. I am tripping. There is no rookish one. Well, I'm glad I didn't do that. A4 is good. No, bishop b5 pawn just takes it. There is nothing farther to it. This was, I guess I was just 
hoping if I could get Rook H1. Yeah. Anyways, then take. This is this would have been interesting, and this is what I did in the game. But see, its opponent's pieces are way too active. The rooks are just kind of in my face. Even if I go bishop g2, and then I will have to come back because what is this bishop doing on g2? So bishop e2, for example. Then that pawn is jumping, and oh, yeah. See, it's kind of sad because if I take it, take, take, boom. This game is giving me, taking me back to sad times. So this is actually how the game ended. I just resigned now because. Uh, I mean, there's not much I can do, but the point still stands. So it's not just about the opening. It's also about the pawn structure. It's also about the piece placement. It's about the piece activities. So this, uh, my game started to get a little weird because after this bishop e3. So after that, I learned more about bishop h4. <laughs> uh, but the point being, you need this bishop h4. Let me tell you why. If take. This is not the end of the world because, whoa, well, you can go queen f4. Now, if pawn to g5, what do you think we should do right now? Actually, that's not a fair question because we only have one good idea. Uh, we have two good ideas to do. So which one do you think is better? I prefer one to the other, to be honest. Mm, there, 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 there. Nikki, yep, but so was I. Take the knight. That's fair. Which knight? <laughs> C6 or E4? If we do knight takes c6, they take this, and this is kind of nice. I would actually be very happy with this, to be fully honest. However, I think I'm more, at least in the game, I was more inclined to taking on e4 and then taking on c6. But compare this position with this position. Right now, I'm leaning more towards this position, to be honest. So I'll leave that up to your judgment. Now, I'm going to go back, talk about not g5. What if knight g5? Also, to clarify, this knight e4 does exist a lot when bishop h4s, because it is, I've seen this much more when there's a bishop here that the bishop can take it. However, this still exists, because if you take it, then they'll take over here and the queen is active, your knights are under attack, you just lost the pawn, so you don't want to take that. Queen f4 is good. Knight g5, now what do you do? There are multiple options, knight c6 being one of them. After take, okay, again, now what do you do? You have one less pawn, you have castled, opponent has not castled, the center is weirdly kind of open, but not really. Like, you see, there are open files, but you can't really break through, so what should we do? Take your time, try to find the best answer. This is also quite interesting because I remember this was actually a game that happened to me with an opponent who was, um, I think maybe uh, 2100, I was 2370 something back in, um, oh my god, five years ago. Actually, yeah, because it was early January in Prague. Oof. So, what do we do? What do we do? Hello, I'm Annie. Eh, bishop d3, where are you going with that bishop? I kind of like a few other ideas. Maybe something to get this queen involved, maybe use this pin. Why not 94? Exactly, 94 would have been very interesting. I did not do that because I couldn't decide what to do if e5 or if d5. I had trouble with both of them. Let's say if e5, I bring the queen down and then they just develop the bishop. 
this uh, too complicated. And the other part of it was what if d5? And now I have to figure out what to do. If I take, take, take f6, boom, g5. I mean, this king is in the middle of the board, but I can't really attack it, right? So that's kind of all partially why I also wanted to call this, um, I wanted to wrap up Sicilian with this because I didn't want to end it to the boring line. Yep, it's a rouser. I, I say this is a so I can add the razor in there too. <laughs> but yeah. No, this is what I want. So I did not do that because I love my material way too much. So queen a4, let's attack. The idea is if queen c7, boom, f4. You gotta put that knight in a corner, boom, f5. Because you have one less pawn and the opponent king is in the center, you have to, have to, have to be more, more dynamic and you have to start attacking left, attacking right, trying to break through a little. So in the real game, my opponent played bishop d7. It's worth noting that knight g5 is also quite interesting because you take, take, then you get this really, really cool knight d5. But still, you know, it's still complicated. It's not an easy game. Opponent is not worse by all means. We are a little bit more comfortable. But yeah, it's just so truly weird. <laughs> Alright, bishop d7 is um, another idea that my opponent tried to utilize in the game. Now, I'm going to take a second and ask you. Why to move? What do we do? Oh, also, sorry, Ben. I stole the cup. We usually, Ben usually uses my book cover mug today. I got to it first. So, what do we think? Let's go as white. Chat is. Okay, take the e-pawn. Yep, you're right. We got to. I mean, I guess that's not a got to type of deal, but it's a good idea. If the pawn takes... Now, this is very interesting because queen e4. And it can be followed by you want to jump to g6. So if knight g5, check, and then you just develop. So this is a very comfortable position. To be fair, bishop d3 to go for g6 is again a, an, another great idea. And white now is definitely slightly better. Still need to be able to attack, still need to be able to get your pieces in the right spots, but white position is better. Nobody here will want to be black. Mm, I would maybe say 0.8 if I had to estimate. Uh, maybe close to a pawn, but no more than a pawn. And I do not have engine in front of me, which kind of feels weird. I miss having engine handy. All right, what if bishop takes? Now what do we do? What do you think Dorsa did? What would Dorsa do? I wish that was a friend. So what do we do? Pin it. How? I'm not going to move my D-Rook. I'm going to keep this guy here. Who else should we move? There we go. Good job by Manny. Yep. Bishop e7. Now, again, you have multiple options. Which option will you take? I think I didn't do the best move here. Kind of should have. Should have, could have, would have. d5 would not have worked because this pawn is pinned. So you could just take it. So. Could. Maybe also with bishop. I kind of like it a bishop more. Actually, I don't really. I don't see that big of a difference. Either one should be fine. So, bishop e7. Now. Bishop takes e7. 
So to be fair, that is actually what I did in the game. But there is something interesting. Knight d5 is fairly interesting as well because if take, take, castle, take, take, and you just pick up c6, and it's a very comfortable position because this pawn will definitely drop sl uh, soon too, and uh, for black it's hard to form an attack. But I prefer bishop e7 because I really enjoyed keeping the king in the center. Again, if queen takes, kaboom. And bye bye. Bye bye rook. So. Ugh, hard to make errors. King, ta uh, king takes. Now what do we do? Also, also, keep in mind, if you give black a few moves, he'll do this, maybe this, and fake castle. So, what do we do as white? I have a rookie one in the chat. I'm assuming this is new rookie one? What are we thinking? Yep, rook, e, rook, e, rook h e one. I agree. My opponent did knight f six. Kaboom, boom. Now what do we do? Again, this position is really, really pretty. All you gotta do is figure out how to continue it. How do we continue the attack? Your rooks are in a good place, your queen could improve, but not that much. Oh, oh, oh queen e4, what if knight takes? Queen h4, it's an interesting point, I, I give you that. Ah, there we go, knight e4. The idea is if you, were if you take it, I'll take with the queen, and now the queen is included too. My opponent uh, played d5, but let's say, like, if, what if they bring their rook there? What do you do? This is a very fun move. As white, what do you do? What do we do? Don't forget to think checks first, then takes, moves with threats, and also the same for the follow up. Snap off the bishop? What bishop? Nikki, is it possible you're a little behind? prefer this take. The idea is you can switch the queen to the other side and start taking e6 and g7. Same idea applies if the other rook goes. Kaboom. Again, same check and same eat ideas. So, uh, in the game, my opponent played d5, but let's also mention knight d5. I'm just gonna go over this real quick because I just really, really like this. You can go c4 and bring the queen and attack this guy. It's so many, so many attacks. I really, really, really like it. See? Attack again. It's like f attack here, attack there. That's why this position is so good. Opponent's plan is so... Opponent's pieces are just so up in the air. So. Uh, let's see. 
So in the video game, I want to play D5. What do we do? What do we do? What if take on F6? I mean, you can. But this also, this really nice diagonal opened up. So what about that? Anything we can do about that? I like that. Bring it to the diagonal. Also, maybe shift it to the other side. King moved. Beautiful check. Now, what do we do? Your position is just asking for a little bit more, a little bit more attacks, a little bit more pieces in there. I'm enjoying this. Come on, we got this. Eat the pawn. There we go. Thank you, Nikki. You know, I'm always hungry for pawns. Actually, that's not necessarily true. The club has been having some really nice sweets on Wednesdays. So. <laughs> Alright, now what do we do? got this Dorsa have you became have you become a member of Yasser's club because of the pawn eating I think I've always been a devotee of eating pawns so I guess so yep <laughs> yeah bring it rook f1 is fine um, queen g3 is another fine idea, but my most favorite one was just doubling up the rook. So what do you think? I like that. However, it's black to move. If it was white to move, knight f5 would have been a nice idea. <laughs> let's say a knight goes to e4, you can just eat pawn, right? So let's say opponent tries to put a little bit of a hard time on us and goes pawn to c5. Then what do you do? There we go, queen g3. And actually here my opponent resigned on. Oh, I was gonna say how do we continue, but I guess after rook e7 there's not much to continue. Now this was one of my uh, better games. I really enjoyed that that specific one. I really really liked it. So, um, the other idea I wanted to talk about was I'm gonna do a huge jump, like a really big jump. Actually, this is a very big jump. Talk about bishop d7 for a bit. Bishop d7. It's a little bit more sophisticated style rather than immediate e6. So if, oh, if bishop d7, let's say we get the queen out, now a6, castle, b5, now what do you do? There is one thing that I've always wanted to try, but I very rarely did. So... What do we think? I 
Ah, someone is asking how is the A tree idea? Well, hmm. I'm not entirely sure. Ah, oh, bye, Cabos. Uh, I think the problem is with A3 in this specific position, if you go do some stuff like this, then opponent can immediately start playing B4, right? And it just kind of gives it a lot of issues for your queen side, especially since you've castled that side. So that's the one thing we want to not really rush into. All right. Um... So the other thing we can talk about is bishop takes f6. How do we like bishop takes f6? I never did this. This is the one thing I've always wanted to do, and now no one else is actually doing it against me. So if bishop takes f6, now what do we do? Yeah, Bishop F6, the idea, let me, let me try to explain a little bit more. I was trying to get the chat to feel a little bit for it before I uh, share up my mind. If take, boom, F4. And now if you do, you know, if you do B4 or so, I have Knight D5, and I'm very comfortable in this position. So that's kind of like if you want to avoid playing A3, you can do that. All right. Uh, in the real game, though, I went A3 also. Yeah, after a3, opponent played h6, now I had to take, and then I went for f4. Knight d5 is another possibility, but with rook g8, I'm not so sure how I would feel about that. Alright, now. Let me go a little bit back. There we go. After f4, my opponent went h5, which, to be fair, kind of, um, I got a little bumped about it, because... I was really, really, really hoping to get this uh, bishop e2 idea. Remember I talked about maybe this? So I was really hopeful for it, but I couldn't really, you know, after h5 I can't really do it. So, now, after h5, what should we do? I, I, I played this a little mm, too hopeful. So, uh, I played bishop e2. Yeah, king. Uh, I'm gonna kind of go a little faster on this because there are so many things in this game that um, I could have done better and opponents could have done better so I'm just gonna go a little bit faster so first thing first what would you do if e6 keep in mind this is a pawn structure we've already talked about a little bit opponent king is in the center we just can't attack it yet how can we try to start attacking it what do you think What do we think? Exactly, you gotta know your theory. I completely agree, Finn. Does G4 do anything? Not just yet, I'll give you that. Um, you can play Rook E1, and then you can start to consider F5s more seriously, because if F5, E5, you get the D5 square. If F5 take, you get the E4, E file. If F5 they don't take, you get the tension. So, uh, it's like a win-win situation. In the real game, opponent played better. She went rook c8. I could have taken, which would have made it interesting, but I was really stubborn on wanting to do that f5 idea. So, I went for rook e1. Opponent took, I took. And she went uh, pawn to e5. Queen c7 was another possibility. Whoa. But now, after pawn to e5, white to move, what do you think we should do?
What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? I can live with queen f2. And the idea is oh apologies. Whew. The idea is that I am going to play a little more simple than that. So what I want to go ahead and do is I want to first defuse what black is trying to do. So black is trying to attack me in the queen side. So if I could play like a king b1 and put the king in a little bit of a more safety, then I can spend the remaining time bringing my forces into queen um, into king side slash center. Uh, master of play f. No, this is a game that I played a while back, like. 10 years ago <laughs> so I'm just kind of showing you my experience in this line so let me see what else do we have here what was wrong with queen a7 uh, let me actually answer that for you if we whoa, whoa, whoa. if we go queen a7 i think my biggest possible concern is what if i have to deal with like something like this defending the pawn pushing over there what should i do about that maybe you don't want to take a6 yeah so i mean but if I don't want to take a6, then what I want to do? Maybe knight d5? Possible. See, this pawn on e5 is kind of weird because you never know exactly what you want to do to it. Are you going to take it? Are you going to let it sit? So it's a lot of ifs and buts. So I went queen f2. I'm not opposed to queen a7, but um, I'm kind of considering... I was considering maybe I could put something on the f file because if i can get like a knight up here if i take then i might be able to you know do something like that i probably was a little too hopeful <laughs> yeah so ooh, opponent went queen c7 king b1 queen c5 we do not want to exchange queens uh-uh now white to move what do we do we have advantage how do we make it even better And master, yep, I am trying. Sometimes it doesn't pay off as fast as I want it to. I see a knight d5 idea. I see bishop g4 ideas. Nobody's saying rook d5. I like rook d5 too. Yeah. And the rook d5 idea is kind of nice too because the queen moves. Now, you protect your third rank. You also want to do knight d5 stuff. And now, let's say opponent played queen c5. Let's say your opponent wants to repeat. What do you do? Are you going to accept that they repeat?
I like this. So I think the idea of f5 might be more interesting if you kind of um, thought about this position more strategically rather than dynamically. I'll tell you what, because opponent has these two bad boys, or I guess good boys, <laughs> Uh, two bishops. So we don't want to help those two bishops. We want to keep the center closed. We want to keep the position closed. We want to use the power of our knights. Right now, we do not have an knight d5 because <coughs> your problems, right? So, f5. Now you could start considering maybe I can take, maybe I can protect this guy so I can freely play knight d5. It takes a load off of your position. Now, upon a played bishop c6 to prevent knight d5, but it gave me opportunity to set up for this take. However, this take was not the best idea because knight b5 would have been much better. <laughs> Let me ask you, what if bishop takes? Now what do you do? And I'm going to switch gears and talk about queen a5 before I um, get any deeper in this opening, um, well actually in this game because I want to finish talking about the opening. Exactly, rook c3, kaboom, bye bye rook. Hallelujah. If opponent plays rook h6, you just got a pawn. So, unfortunately, I was a kid. I did not know the value of pawns. And I missed it. Anywho, I'm going to switch gears. This game went on and on and on. And I had a better position. I blew it. Opponent cut much better. She blew it. Ended in a draw. <laughs> so now, we're going to do final idea with queen a5. And I'm going to shock you with such an amazing move of boom, take. <laughs> Uh, taking my taking was definitely new to me because I want to take, but I've always done something with like queen d2 first. But right now I just can't do this because you can, you know, you can take it and force my hand into farther takes and farther loss of stuff. So uh, in this specific game with queen a5, I went ahead and I took it, and my opponent took back. Now what should we do right now? This is a very interesting move right now. What do we do? Any feelings? No feelings? Oh, good for you. <laughs> All right, no. Well, ah, thank you, Brian Little. There we go. I like that. Yeah, I've seen few other people mention bishop b5 too. Loving. Knight b3 also a possibility, but bishop b5 sits well, sits much better with me. Um, because after bishop d7, another fun idea with queen h5. Now there's an, another small idea here you want to take, if you can. Because, uh, wait, it uh, doesn't work. I was hoping to get a little bit more creative. Now, my point is, if you could take it and your queen was protected, then you could take again. You gain a piece and get the queen back. So it just gives a lot of options. Now, opponent thought that I made a mistake and he played a6. So now what do we do? You kind of got to do the knight b3. At this point, you're too committed. Queen got to move. You get to save the bishop. There you go. Oh, I wish knight e6. Ooh. I really wish. But knight e6 are not really attacking much. So they could just take this. Unfortunately. 
But no, I, oh, it's kind of, let me, let me try to explain the thoughts. Because this is illegal, and if this takes, ah, take it. Then I could take over here and pick up the queen, so I wish, I wish it worked. I wish knight d6 worked. No, knight b3 is the best one. Push the queen away, save the bishop, and now my opponent plays something like e6. I long castled, started my f4, f5 business. And now, question for you guys. Can we take on e6 comfortably? feeling feeling good like I should yeah I need a karaoke night all right so take check king move take what do you do you know you have advantage because these pawns just suck <laughs> and I'm, I don't have a better way of expressing it they just suck and your knights are comfortable, your queen is in a good position, this king is just pretty weak. So what do you think? What do we think? What do we do now? I'll give you a small hint. Try to figure out some of the uh, opponent's active pieces and see if you can exchange them off or eliminate them. Bishop g4 may be tempting, ah, yes, but you have the right thing to attack, but the wrong white piece. Knight d5 would be it, oops, knight d5 would be it. The idea is, if you take, well then, hallelujah, gotta move this horsey, and then I can just bring this, oh my god, this is too good, it hurts how good it is. May oh, even maybe... I just want to eat this with so many different... Oh, not to the queen, because the, the bishop drops. But this could also be pretty nice. I'm staying with e5, with the e4 pawn, though. Anywho, opponent went queen g5. They really wanted to exchange. And the, I was like, you know what? If you want to exchange, you got to pay for it. Now, if you take it, I take it. And I, you know, I at least win a pawn. This is later in my chess career. This is like 2017, when I had started to realize how hungry you should be for pawns. <laughs> so... Queen g6 was what my opponent played. I followed with the same idea. I'm gonna try to eat your pawns. If you don't want to exchange queens, that's fine. I'll save my queen. But I will also start attacking you in the process. Now, this is uh, one of the last critical moves. So what do you think right now? What do we do? Knight d4, beautiful. Thank you, Imani. Thank you, Richard. Yeah. With knight d4. Oh, sneeze. Nah. <laughs> Sorry. It's just very <laughs> tickly. It is so cold in St. Louis. I've, I think I've lost my... My... Sensation. Sorry, everybody. One of these times, it will be real. I promise you. All right, so after knight d4, ooh, opponent went rook c5. Ooh. So now, finally, I get to eat stuff. That's fine, we can exchange queens too. I have extra material, so I'm comfortable. Uh, I'm confident I can change this. Uh, yeah, 
What? Nikki, you say it's in 60s? We're 20, 20 degrees Fahrenheit, which is like, what, minus 10? Probably more? In Celsius? You know how cold that is? It's so cold, my hands are peeling. Okay. I'm not here to complain about the weather, especially since whenever I'm at the chess club, I crank it up to 70 something. So, <laughs> all right. It is freezing. It's so cold. Yeah. Anywho, um, after Rook F2, what now? Opponents play Rook H7. Again, this is far outside of uh, the typical Rouser, but the pawn structure is kind of the same. It's the ideal pawn structure. So, let's go up. Let's attack a little left, a little right, Yasser style. I actually don't know why I think that's Yasser style. It's just, he's, I just always remember whenever he's playing, um, I've seen him play friendly games and he's just like a little here, a little there, a little pawn here, a little pawn there. Anyways, um, I, I managed to secure another beautiful pawn, save my pawn, attack, aw, this was, I was cute, I was hopeful too. Uh, opponents trying to exchange stuff. Whoa, whoa, that was not true. I was hopeful for more this than that. And again, eat another pawn, push a little, attack a little. This is such a good game. Why didn't I show this before? But the rating difference wasn't that much. It was about 400 points, but my opponent was uh, 1950. He wasn't a, you know, he wasn't a beginner. He knew what he was doing. But my point is that just because of how comfortable I was out of opening, just because of a few ideas that I had with which critical pawns to attack, aka play f4, f5 as white, keep those pawns secured and double on the f, and uh, enjoy that diagonal with a queen, having a queen or a bishop on h5 attacking the f7 pawn, I had a very comfortable game. My opponent didn't really stand much of a chance here. And yeah, that is the last of Sicilian. Uh, tearing up a bit. No, I'm kidding. It, it was a fun. It, I'm so glad Sicilian is over. I'm not going to be doing another opening for at least t another month because I cannot talk about this much opening. Whew. But most likely uh, we'll do a nice selection of puzzles next week so we can just wear off the opening and. I would like to do a mini mini endgame series, so let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you have any questions from any of the openings that I've done so far, leave a comment below. I actually started reading the comments. I've seen some very <laughs> uh, unique ones, but for most parts, they're really... I, I like the comments. Thank you. Keep leaving them. Like, share, subscribe, and if you're going to be here for another hour, and if you have a game for me to watch, Switch to Twitch, meet us there in about 10 minutes, have a game in the Leeches link and send it. If not, see you next week.